Okay, in this video, we'll be proving both the law of sine and also law of cosine, and we'll just be focusing on acute angles, and it's the same for any angles in triangle, right? But anyway, let's start with law of sine first. Let me draw you guys a picture right here, and I'm going to label this to be capital A, capital B, and capital C, and this right here will be just little b, and this right here will be little c, and this right here will be little a. Alright? So now, this is how we are going to start. First, we pick a side to be the base. So, let's go ahead and just pick this to be the base. Then, we draw a perpendicular line from this point. And of course, this is going to give us the height. So, I'll put on H right here. And actually, let me write this as H1, right? So now, we have these two triangles right here. And because we are mentioning law of sine, so focus on the sine. You see, this right here is a right triangle now. So, if you look at this angle A, we can just figure out the sign for you for that. So, let's see, sine of capital A. This right here, of course we know, sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. So, in our case, it will be H1 over C. And there's a reason why I'm using H1, you will see why. Alright, so this is what we have. Of course, we can multiply the C on both sides. So, based on this, we know that H1 is equal to C times sine of angle A. That's good. Then, we will be doing the same thing, but with this triangle. Look at sine of the C right here. Well, in this case, this is still our opposite, and this is the hypotenuse now. So, we have H1 over A. And again, multiply the A on both sides, we get H1 is equal to little a times sine of the angle c. Very good. Now have a look. h1 is equal to this, h1 is equal to that. Of course, this and that, they have to equal, right? So, if I make them equal to each other, this right here, we will get c times sine a, that will be little a times sine c, like that. And then, of course, we can just divide the C on both sides and divide the little a on both sides. Then, we can say sine a over little a is equal to sine c over little c, which is very good. And we're almost done. But you know, we are only doing this to the angle a and also angle c. How about angle b? Angle b is getting jealous. That's not good. So, have a look. Here is angle A. Now, let's go ahead and pick this to be the base. And again, we draw perpendicular line, but this time will be from here. So this is going to be another height, isn't it? Well, this time I will label this as H2. This is why I said this is uh, H1 earlier, right? Now we can do the same thing. Have a look though. If we look at A right here in this blue triangle, on the bottom, right, in this blue triangle on the bottom right here. Well, let's go ahead and figure out sine A. This is going to be what? Well, opposite is H2 over the hypotenuse is little b. So we have this right here, yeah? Similarly, we can look at this b right here and we can say sine capital B. This right here will be equal to, this time the opposite is still H2 but the hypotenuse is little a, so we have this right here. And you can imagine, we can do the same thing. And yes, we will be able to get sine a over little a to be equal to sine b over little b. This, again, as I said, it's equal to sine b over little b, and this is equal to that. So of course, everybody's equal to each other. So that's it. So in the end, let me just put it down in the usual order right here. So, ladies and gentlemen, this right here is our law of sine. Now, right here, we'll be looking at the law of cosine. So, let's go ahead and draw the triangle again. So, we have A, B, and C. And let's go ahead and label this as little b, little c, and little a. The step is pretty much the same, but you have to use what we call the Pythagorean theorem. So, let me remind you guys, of course, right here, if we have a triangle, let's say, Angle C is the right triangle. So here we have, of course, a right triangle. And let's put it down like this. Let's say this is little c, this is little a, this is little b. Well, as we all know, this right here, c squared 
is equal to a squared plus b squared. Just like this. Very good. This is the classic Pythagorean theorem. And you do not have to use the law of cosine to prove the Pythagorean theorem. You can use similar triangle. In fact, you can do over 100 ways to prove this, right? But anyway, here we go. This is how we are going to do the law of cosine. First, we do exactly the same as that. Pick a base. I will put this down right here to be our base. I will show you guys what c squared is equal to in our case, right? Okay, and then I'm going to draw a perpendicular line from here. So again, this is going to be the height. This time though, I'm going to label this as b1 and this part as b2. Right, so b1 is going from here to here and b2 is going from here to here. And next, we are going to focus on this part of the triangle and do pretty much what I did over there. Here's the angle C. Let's go ahead and figure out what sine C is. Of course, it's just the opposite over hypotenuse, which is H over A. And again, multiply A on both sides, we get H is equal to A sine C. All right, good. Well, this is the law of cosine. So we will also have to figure out what's the cosine of C. Well, still focus on this triangle. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so we get B2 over A. And again, let's multiply the A on both sides, so we get B2 being equal to A times cosine C. Now, we use this triangle already. Let's go ahead and use this one. And again, the law of cosine is a generalized version of the Pythagorean theorem. For this triangle here, we will be using the Pythagorean theorem. Again, you do not have to know the law of cosine first in order to prove that, so you can legitimately use this in this triangle here, right? So, by looking at this triangle, we know that c squared has to be equal to this square plus that square, right? Well, let me write down the h square first, right here. And then we add it with b1 square, like this. Okay, h, of course, is this already. So let me just write it down. But what's b1 though? What's b1? Well, b1 is only from here to here. We know the whole thing from here to here is b. And this much is b2, which we know that right here already. So I'm going to look at the b1 as the whole thing, which is b, and then minus b2. And then, of course, we still have the square. And this is so wonderful because we do know this and we do know that. And you will see C2 will be based on A and B and also cosine. You will see. All right. Let me write this down right here for you guys. First, we put on H. And then that's this. So I'll put on parentheses. A sine C. This is the capital C, all right? And then we square that. Next, we add B is just B, right? B is just B. Minus B2 is this, namely A cosine c and then right here we square that good square this we get a square sine square c plus well this thing square we have to multiply the out so we get this thing square which is b square let me actually write this part in red to make it clear for you guys next we do minus two times this and that which we have two a b and then cosine c, like this, right? And lastly, we have to add, let me just put down, we have to add a square and then cosine square c, like this. Again, the first thing square minus two times this and that. And then the third part is we have to add this quantity square, which is a square plus cosine square. Now have a look. Here we have a square, a square. We can factor it out. So we're just left with sine square plus cosine square. And the best thing is that their input is both C. So sine square C plus cosine square C is nicely equal to one. So in another word, with this part, it's just going to be A square times one. All this right here is the A square, all right? And then for the rest, you can see that this is just plus B square and then minus to a b and then of course in the end we have the cosine c like this 
And of course, there are other versions of the law of cosine. Depends on which side you want to find out. Earlier, I found out the c square, which we get a square plus b square minus 2ab cosine c. You can do the same thing with a square and b square, right? And just how to change the variables and change the arguments of the picture like that, right? That's it. And as you can see, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared with this part. It does in the cosine. If c is 90 degrees, cosine 90 degrees is 0. That would be making this part equal to 0, and we get our usual Pythagorean theorem. Again, this is a generalized version. This right here can be done without using the without using the law of cosine. Black pen, red pen, black pen, red pen. The calculus teacher uses black pen, red. He does math for fun. If he cues get done using complex numbers, doing marathons. And as always, that is it.